Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, it's another fun winter project. If you've caught some of my show over the last couple of years, you know in the winter time, especially being in Minnesota, when it's weather like we've been having the last week here, negative numbers in the morning, single digits above zero in the uh, afternoons. Yeah, we like to be inside. Well, we don't like to, we kind of have to. And you do winter projects for bonsai. I made the uh, boot tray pot. You can check out that episode. That was a fun project. I think that turned out pretty good. I also uh, made a Lazy Susan, which has been working wonderful for all my bigger trees. So the Lazy Susan was a winter project. And of course, this past, well, a year ago in 2022, when we entered the new year, I had made those 15 episodes around the bonsai pot tank. Yeah, I still have some more uh, fixing to do on that one, but that was a fun project. And so what is it going to be this year? Well, I'm calling it the Helping Hands Bonsai Pot. So my Aunt Mary, who is really a good photographer, so it's my wife's aunt, so my aunt-in-law, I guess, right? Mary, who takes wonderful photographs, sends me pictures once in a while. And actually, she uh, gave me a super steal of a deal on the lens that I'm using to shoot these very YouTube videos. So thank you, Mary, for that. And so she's watched some of the videos. I look at some of the photographs she sends me, and we have that kind of uh, photographic video graphic uh, back and forth uh, connection. And a few months back, she sent me this really cool picture of this tree growing on a rock in this pond or this lake. Um, don't know the location of where that was, but absolutely stunning photograph. And then she sent me this. That's right. It's two hands coming out of the earth in the grass at a park with a tree in there. So I sent her a text and said, hey, thank you. That's, that's crazy. That's cool. Maybe I should do a bonsai like that. Well, so what do you think I did next? It's time to create the mold of my hand that'll become the hand pot. And so I have some Luna Bean Create a Mold mix here that we just add with water. It's about a pound and we have eight cups of water already in the bucket that I constructed. I had to make the construction of the bucket separately so I'd be ready to go. So I took two ice cream buckets. I took both of the uh, handles off of them, cut off the bottom of the second one, and flipped that second one upside down so the two lids would be the same diameter, and then duct tape them around to get a nice secure finish. My hands will go in there now. Now I have to find the optimal position for me to stand for five to seven minutes in one position so I make the mold as true as possible. I've never used this mold product before. We're gonna see, I've never used a mold product before. We're gonna see how it works. So I have the bucket with the water and I have the mold agency and I have a spatula and I have a spoon here, some paper towels. So I have to be very careful with this. This is a one take shot. So I thought about going wider, like a double hand here, double pot cupping it more this way, where do the thumbs go? I can't, I can't put any of my hand touching the outside of the bucket. Otherwise, there won't be any mold to, to, to cast in the mold. So I've got to have the rubber material solid all the way around and be able to slip my hands out. So I got to make it cupped and just go down in there until I reach the bottom. And when I reach the bottom, I'll have to lift up just a touch to make sure that um, I don't have too thin of a layer at the bottom there. So here we go. We're going to start the stopwatch and we're going to go for the gusto. I don't know if that's enough in there. But we're going to go ahead and go for it. So here we go. Hands down, cup the way I want it. We are approaching the six minute mark. So I'm gonna get up on my knees a little bit more here and uh, get the bucket straight down on the ground. And we're hitting 815 here now. So I'm gonna slowly take out one hand. Okay. And the other hand, and there's a little loose piece in there. 
So there we have our mold. And it looks like everything's solid, but one little nick of the bucket right here. There's a thin part right there, but that should be okay. We can, you might have to sand a few pieces out. There's some chunks in there. We have the mold all set off to the side here. It's been curing for a couple of hours, and now it's time for perfect cast. So I have not used perfect cast, but saw a couple of videos on the old internet, and uh, perfect cast looks like a good solution here. A really durable, it says five times harder than typical plaster. This is gonna have a bonsai tree in it with a lot of water and things going through it for years. We wanna make sure it's gonna be strong. We will put some protection coating over it and all through it anyway, but it's a nice, hopefully, five times stronger, gonna be a, a good uh, product for us. So here we go. Let's see if it'll pop out. Now for this to work, there's the cup of my hand, but I need the rest of the mold to come out here and have the rest of the pot right here. We'll wait till the meal comes and we'll try this again. Now that the buckets are taped together, I have enough room for my hands to go in there and we have a bigger package of mold. So this time we're uh, using the uh, Perfect Mold, which is the same company as the Perfect Cast. And it's a little bit more product, so we're gonna be able to get more in there to make a better, deeper cast. Uh, so it's gonna be totally I think a lot better and more successful than the last one. So there we go, there's the inside of the hand. We have a nice, this will be a nice solid piece right here, which will be the back side of the pot. Perfect cast, we gotta start doing some measuring. Let's look at the time. We're at about quarter after two in the afternoon, so somewhere around three o'clock, we'll be able to take a peek at our mold and see if it cast it properly. I spent a little extra time doing some editing upstairs and it's already after four o'clock, so this has been sitting for over an hour and a half now. So it's time for the reveal. It's still very warm though. But I think that's the mold, not the cast. Break it away here. Creating some air pockets. Oh, here we go. Oh boy. There's the first part of my hand. There's me cupping. Cupping in the mold. Oh boy. Here's the back so far. Looking pretty smooth. Oh yeah, there we go. So I saw some people who made some uh, artwork with their hands and they put their thumbs up in the air and then they put that on the wall and they made a coat rack to hold your coat in your, in your uh, workshop and it was of your own hand and your own thumb. Now, that might be kind of weird for some people. Of course, this project might be kind of weird for some people. But there is the makings of my bonsai pot with my hands. And so the idea is we're gonna have a tree in here that'll be a little shoheen tree, so no more than eight inches tall. It'll be a nice big bushy tree someday, hopefully, and it'll sit in the palm of my hand like I am giving it some TLC. My next phase was to take a knife and kind of go through the uh, sculpture and uh, take away any imperfections. I was able to use my fingernails to get some of the bumps off of the back and the side. I used the knife to get in between the fingers, the fingernails. I discovered too, the more and more I handled the hands, the white is getting to be more of a dirty look. Of course, because my hands probably aren't completely clean. Now that I've kind of taken the knife and got rid of some of those imperfections. I'm kind of at a, at a stage where I, I want to seal this. 
Um, I will be painting this a color. I don't know if I'll keep it white or not. It's a very blaring color. Um, the original image I saw from my aunt, of course, was white out on the lawn with grass growing around it. I still may go with white. I'm not sure. Probably not. Um, I've seen some cool spray paints on some YouTube videos where it looks like kind of a rock. I can make it look like it was a cement cast, which maybe next time I should have done or I should do cement because um, I'm not sure how weatherproof this is going to be. But because of that question, we are going to put a sealant on it. So I'm not going to work on this one right away. I'm going to put this one aside because I first want to see how the sealant's going to react to the product by doing it on my original one. So while watching a YouTube video, if you can't find it on YouTube, it's not worth doing, right? It's kind of like duct tape of the past. If you can't fix it with, with duct tape, it ain't worth fixing. Yeah, YouTube's a wonderful place. We all like it, don't we? So I discovered that a possible sealant for me would be for um, some tile sealant. So I went out and got some tile sealant. The stuff is not cheap. Um, one of the problems with a lot of sealant for cement products I found out is that they make them in such big containers, you know, gallon buckets, five gallon buckets, because you're going to maybe do your driveway or something like that. But one of the YouTubers that I uh, found with my research had talked about using tile sealant. So if you're doing a grout sealing or a tile sealant, something where you're, you're working with tile, you can go ahead and use that product. Okay. So I have some sealant right here in this little container. One of my old measuring cups and we're gonna go ahead and just start applying this on so the reason why i want to use this as i do on my my spare thing here is i don't know how much this stuff will eat away at the fingers and the the knuckles and the fingerprints on this cast so we're just going to put it on we've got some gloves on for protection and just at first glance, dripping it on over here, the cast isn't smoothing out or anything. Nothing's like disappearing here. So we just go ahead and make sure it gets on all the parts. And you can use any kind of cloth. I'm getting a little bit of a smell of the uh, solvent now through my mask a little bit, but wearing a mask just for extra caution. So that's in there pretty darn good. Okay, so there we go. Nice and thick. And we have an experiment done. So I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna dampen it down a little bit so I don't have any extra because again, I don't want anything to dry unevenly. This did soak in here pretty good. And what he suggested, the, the person I saw with the cement, is that you know, a lot of that's gonna soak right in. And so then you can put on another coat, okay? So, we have this all dabbed. It's just gonna sit and dry here for a while. And then I'm gonna come down here in another hour or so, and I'm gonna pour some water on here and see if it beads off or if it wants to just soak right in. Because when we water our plants in this kind of a, a, a bonsai pot, if we water our plants every single day, I don't want this uh, water soaking in here and, and have it retain water. Then of course, when it gets to the colder season, I'll bring it back in because I'll probably put a tropical plant in here, but I wouldn't want any expanding and contracting to cause any chipping and breaking either. So the sealant is on there. Uh, round number one, we'll put this in a plastic baggie so it doesn't get icky. And um, yeah, we'll check this in about an hour or so. After reading the directions a little more carefully, it said you should have it uh, cure for a full 24 or more hours. So it's been curing for 24 more hours. And look at that. We've got the beating we're hoping for. Not as much beating here, but it's definitely beating right there. So the sealant is working. They do recommend more than one coat. We're gonna bring the real one in and we're gonna start sealing that one up. The first of a couple coats.
We got a nice coat of the sealant on the hand. We'll let it dry for 24 to 48 hours. And then we'll put on coat number two and we'll see how water repellent it is. And then of course, once this is done, we will go ahead and give it a little bit of a, a, little bit of a spray paint. Um, we'll pick a color, whether it's gonna be white or some kind of stone look, and we'll give it its final look. We'll also drill a hole through the bottom for a drain hole. We'll figure out where that's gonna best be. But now, we sit and wait for a couple more days. Now the mold part was fun. I made a mistake in the first one, didn't buy enough supplies, but then the second one turned out really, really good. And albeit really kind of cool, my wife was thinking it was a little bit creepy. Maybe it's just because they're my hands and when you see them, it looks like my hands and it's kind of creepy. Uh, but if you want to see some really interesting bonsai art, check out David Crust out of Brainerd, Minnesota. He does a lot of really cool things with larch trees. And David Crust has a, a larch tree that's been on display that's coming out of a vacuum cleaner. He's got dolls and all kinds of different stuff. I've seen people grow trees out of the back end of trucks. I think even Nigel is thinking about a forest with his um, uh, Volkswagen Beetle Bug or something. I forgot what car it was that he's going to put. A lot of really cool artistic uh, experiments going on. So this has been fun. But the mold was the easy part. Now I tried to make a tray to put them, the hands in where I could grow some grass or moss around there. So I tried my luck at making a cement tray. Yeah, the first attempt didn't work out so well. I tried to take it off of the mold a little too early, but we have too thin a walls and we had too thin of a bottom. It wouldn't have worked out anyway. It would have been a very delicate pot. The mold turned out pretty good. The tray was awful. I, I gotta learn more about that. We got some paint on there and uh, you know what? I found a tray that I thought would be suitable. I kind of hemmed and hawed between a bigger oval one and this square one. And I thought, you know what? Let's do that. So check out where I put the hand into a tray and then I pick the tree to put in it.
What's really fun about the boxwood, the trunk always looks kind of older and majestic early in its life. A little more texture to the bark. It's got a nice uh, kind of bright color to it, which is why I picked this tree as potential to put into the Helping Hands Bonsai project with the darker colored paint on the finished project of the hand, I think this trunk will pop real nice with the dark hand. And these trees lend themselves to look like a pretty miniature tree pretty quickly. The other nice thing about a boxwood is they root so profusely. You can repot them almost any time of year. Now this is a tricky time of year because we're at the end of January and the start of February as I repot this. And I will either put it in my plant room for the rest of the uh, winter, or I'll put it out in the cold frame and let it sit out there until we get warm enough to make some changes in the spring. With so many roots, I'll make that decision when I'm done with the project. As I was thinking about using the boxwood tree, I thought it'd be a little bit too big. And I might be stretching it a bit, but all in the, all in the name of experimentation and art, I thought I would continue with this tree. Now it's, it's really nice in the tree, and I wanna see the design of the hand but I'd also possibly envision, if you've ever seen people like dump over buckets and you see the soil spilling out, it's like my hand just lifted this up from the ground and this was the earth that was underneath with this uh, tree and it spilled on over into the grass. Well, let's give the final product a spin. You can see the nice flared roots right there in the front. Going off to the back side now. You can see the water is pooling off the uh, painted uh, hand, which is nice. We don't want it just to be soaking in. And there's the front. So we have some soil spilling out over here. This is going to protect the bottom layer of roots right here for right now. And as it starts to get uh, more growth with the roots, it'll cling on to this uh, hand pot. And uh, yeah, the tree is uh, got a nice thick trunk with a nice little nabari there on this side. It'll have more development in the back side. We made one big chop in the back to open it up and cleaned up this one here to make this back one, the, uh, the, the uh, main trunk of the tree line stand out a little bit more. Made some uh, little clips on here to uh, support all the root clipping that we did. One of the nice things about the boxwood tree is they do go into threes a lot so you can really practice your three down to two pruning on all of the branches. And you can always shorten them really, really easily by clipping the tips off as well. The tree leans a little bit this way and towards the front, which is not too bad. The front, the lean to the left side. I don't know if I'll straighten that out now or think about it as it grows. And we see the uh, growth pattern of this tree as it uh, matures and solidifies into this pot. I think of because of all the roots that I took off of this thing, I think I will keep it in the plant room and give it lots of tender loving care. We'll keep it out of the direct lights at first, but it'll be warmer in here. It'll slowly get used to having all of a sudden warm temperatures. Now, ultimately, we have a little bit of a thick bulge down here with three or four branches coming out of that same area. We can try to reduce that with cutting one of these branches off in the future or cutting off this leader one if we wanted to make it a little bit uh, less energy going there. Um, 
we'll watch it with this first year growth and maybe make some more decisions after we know it's going to take hold and do okay. Isn't that something? And maybe that's all you need to say about that. That it certainly, well, something. <laughs> there it is. Um, I've had a blast putting this together. Uh, yeah, the tray is probably a little small, so I undersold that. Uh, we'll have to get a bigger tray. I do like the rectangle, though, better than the oval when I put it in here. And I'll probably cover these, uh, these stones, this uh, bonsai soil, with some more sphagnum moss and have the grass growing right out of the pot, maybe, or some moss. Not grass, but moss, if it all grows. But in the meantime, we got some moss around the outside, got the grass spilling over, kind of like those tipped over pots you see. And as you know, I went with the boxwood tree. I think it looks pretty cool. It's been really fun. There we go. Another project started and completed. A lot of learning along the way. And that's gonna do it for another edition of Dave's Bonsai. So hey, thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to hear some of the comments on this one. And my wife, by the way, yeah, she still thinks it's a bit creepy. Hey, everyone. Take care of you. Take care of your bonsai. Creepy or not. And we'll catch you on the next one.